back everybody to another video in our series on making a brick breaker game. This is Mike Page with scriptingisfun.com and in this video we're going to be adding in a special brick. We're going to make one of these bricks here where it uh, takes two hits to break it instead of one and then we'll talk about some other ideas for how you can customize your bricks. So um, currently whenever the ball hits a brick uh, let's go to the ball script here and take a look at that. Alright, in the ball script, currently, when the ball hits something that's tagged as a brick, it is trying to make the uh, power up, and it's making an explosion, it's destroying the brick, and then uh, it's updating the score. So what we're going to need to do before we do all this, if we want to make a brick that takes more than one hit, we're going to have to have uh, the ball here look to see if the brick should actually be destroyed. So before we do any of this, we're going to have to do a check. So if it's the brick we hit, then we have to check to see how many uh, hits it has left. And if it is uh, still got some hits left, then we're not going to do all this. We're actually going to have it do something else. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, and it, and it depends on what we want to have for the final outcome. But the first thing we need to do is go to our brick and modify it slightly. So in our brick script, right now currently it's just holding its points. Uh, it's also going to need to know now how many hits it takes to break. So let's make a public int. We'll call it hit, hits to break. And then we can set that out in the inspector for each brick. Okay, and then um, we're going to just need to keep track of that. It's also going to need to have a different sprite to switch to because it would be nice to have a visual effect where if the brick is hit, that we change its appearance somehow so people can see, hey, there was an effect that did actually hit it. So we're going to make a public sprite variable and we'll call this um, hit sprite. So we're also going to put that out there. And let's go ahead and, and go out into Unity here and just take one of these bricks and uh, change it. So let's go pick a brick out here in our scene, maybe this guy right here on the end. So we can keep track of which one it is. In his brick script, let's go ahead and say that he needs two hits to break. And then let's give him a hit sprite. Now I went into uh, Photoshop and I took my purple brick sprite here and I just went in and added some what looks like little crack lines to it. So this is going to be my uh, purple brick that's kind of been cracked. So let's go back to this brick here that we were working on. Let's drag this sprite into the hit sprite. So it's a purple brick cracked sprite. Okay, so now we got to um, save that. Let's go back into our ball script now. And we're going to have to check to see um, if the brick should be broken or not. So right here, we're going to have to say if. Now, we're going to have to get the script that's attached to this brick so we can see um, what we should do with it. And it's going to be similar to what we did right here. We're just going to use a get component. This time we were looking for points. Um, this t the other time we're going to look for uh, if it should be broken. So it would be best not to do this twice. So why don't we just right away, before we even do that if statement, if we hit a brick, let's go ahead and just get its brick script and store it in a, uh, in a variable here. So let's just call this brick script. And we'll just call it lowercase brick script for our variable name. And we'll go ahead and set that equal to this. So I'm just going to copy out this part and paste it in. So now brick script, we're going to store brick script under this name brick script. And we're going to go to other, which is the brick we just hit. We'll go to its game object. We'll do git component brick script. And that will give us a link to the brick script. So then we can just go ahead and um, replace all this with brick script. Uh, and we want the lowercase b brick script like this. So we can just go to brickscript.points to read its points. And then we can finish our um, our if statement here now that we have that brick script stored. So now we can say brick script dot and we can say hits to break. 
and let's say if that is greater than 1. Because if there's 1 left, then we just hit it, and it's going to be broken. Okay? So if it's greater than 1, then we want to do something here. Okay? Which basically is to tell the brick that it's been hit, and that it should take one of its hits to break away, and it should swap to its um, new sprite. So we're going to actually call a function on this brick here, telling it to do that. Now, if bricks, uh, if hits to break were not greater than one, then we can do an else here, and we can uh, just put a new set of curly brackets around all this, so that all of this now will happen if we had one or less hits to break. Then we're going to go ahead and destroy the brick and make the explosion and all that. All right, but here we just want to tell the brick that it needs to switch to its new broken state. So uh, that's going to be a function that we're going to call in the brick script. So I'm going to save this and go back to the brick script now and I'm going to give it a function. So this is called this a void and let's go ahead and make this public so that we can call it from a different uh, script here. And we'll call this public void break brick and then we just put in what we want to have happen. So the first thing we want to do is take one of the hits to break away. We want to change that down by one. So we'll say hits to break minus minus. That'll take one away from our hits to break. So next time it gets hit, it'll be broken. And then we want to change uh, its appearance. So we have this hit sprite. So we're going to go to the sprite render. So let's go out here in Unity here and take a look at this. Uh, out in Unity, if we're on a, a, a brick here, one of our sprites, it's got a sprite renderer. And inside the sprite renderer is a sprite. This is the sprite that's currently being displayed. So if I change that to my broken one, you'll see that it changes it. Now, evidently I need to scale this up a bit because I haven't um, set that. So let's go take a look and do that real quick. Uh, on our brick here, that's set to 100, and on our other brick, we set it to 64. Okay, so I've just got to go in here and change this to 64 pixels per unit. There we go, and now it's the right size. So that is the sprite that we want to swap to. So we just have to get it to swap the sprite that's loaded into the slot here. Let's take that back to our regular pur purple brick here. Whoops, wrong one. Let's go back here. And let's change this back to this purple brick for now, like it was default. But we need to swap that out. Okay, so to change the sprite that's displayed, we first have to get the sprite renderer from the sprite here. So we're going to just um, go to uh, Get Component. And what we want here is the sprite renderer. And then we want to go to the sprite that's being displayed, and we want to set it equal to our hit sprite. So what this should do is it should go to get the sprite render from this brick and go ahead and just change its sprite to the, the current sprite. And that should be all we really needed to do right now. So let's save that. Okay, now that we have uh, this function all set, we have to go back to our ball script now and tell our ball to call that on this uh, brick script. So we've already stored a connection to the brick script of the brick that we just hit. So now we're just going to say brick script dot break brick. We will call that function and then it should work out. So let's go out to Unity here and let's test it out. We're trying to hit this brick right here in the corner. So let's see if we get the behavior we would expect. And there we go. The first time I hit it, it showed us broke. Uh, symbol and the second time I hit it it broke and fell and of course all these other bricks are still okay so there we are we made a special brick that can be broken and can take more than one hit okay and uh, of course we could go in here now and grab this brick number 11 and we could actually make it its own prefab so we have uh, just a regular brick here and we could uh, drag this down into our prefabs folder and then we could call this um, like maybe a brick two hit or something like that. So it takes more than one hit or maybe better yet, we call it brick like multi hit. 
something like that. Uh, and then if we want more of these out in the scene, we can go ahead and swap them out and we have uh, all the settings here. And if we want to adjust them all, then we have a link to them. Like for instance, we could say maybe this brick actually takes three hits to break. So the first time we hit it, it's going to change its sprite to the new one. The second time it'll keep it at the same one. The third time it'll break. But I would probably actually do three different sprites in that case then so that people can see that they're having an effect on it. Or you can make it change color. There's all sorts of things you could do here uh, to make that work a little better. But if we test this out now and it takes three hits to break, then uh, the first time it breaks, okay, two and three. So you can keep adjusting like that. So there you have it. That's how we can make some bricks that act different than others. There's a lot of different types of things you could do with this. You could have bricks that are unbreakable and position them in your level where people have to work around them. Um, you could have bricks that apply different effects to your ball when they hit it. There's this uh, almost endless possibility. So use your creativity on this. I'd love to hear from some of you on how you applied this into your own version of this game and different effects or different types of bricks that you've developed uh, using these principles. Uh, as always, thanks for watching the videos. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And have a great day.